In this video lecture, I'll be talking about molecular probes. Molecular probes are single-stranded uh, complementary DNA or RNA molecules that are radio-labeled or fluorescent tag and that are used to probe or trace out certain uh, DNA or RNA. That is the target uh, DNA molecule with which this probe will hybridize and you will be able to detect the probe because it is radio labeled or fluorescent tagged by methods like autoradiography or so. so. For example, this is a single standard DNA molecule. It can be a probe if it is radio labeled. So radio label may be present at the pi prime end or it may be incorporated within the DNA. It may also be an RNA molecule, but basically it should have to be a single-stranded uh, nucleic acid. So, uh, th this, this particular probe is complementary to a particular DNA, say that DNA is this DNA. So, if this DNA is the target of this particular probe, so it will have a sequence which is complementary to this probe. Say for example, in this DNA, the sequence is like A, T, G, C, G, G, T, A, T, A, G, C, like that. So in the probe, you will find sequence like T, A, C, G, C, C, A, T, C, G. As you know, this uh, T is complementary to A and C is complementary to G. So the, the probe will thus find out its counterpart in all the DNA that are present over there and it will hybridize with it since it has got the complementarity with it, forming the hydrogen bonds. As you know, three hydrogen bonds between G and C and two hydrogen bonds between A and T will be formed. And at a particular temperature, this will be stable. So this is what this probe is about. This one is a probe. So how do we make our probe? There are three methods I will tell you by which we generally make our probe. The first one is random priming. Second one is NIC translation. And the third one is end leveling. So you have to have a, a sequence of DNA already in your lab, maybe uh, that is completely homologous to the target sequence or it may be a heterologous DNA. I am considering that you have a small uh, PCR product in your lab for a particular gene and that is not the full length gene and you want to uh, screen the full length gene from certain library maybe uh, genomic dna or cdna library or from a blot southern blot or you are or you may be doing a northern blot whatsoever but you have to have a probe so this is the, this pcr product is your is going to act as your source of your probe so how do you generate? First, let us talk about random priming. Random priming. As the name suggests, uh, it is a method of uh, priming. The primers are random hexamers, six nucleotide long. Uh, DNA elements, single standard DNA molecules that will that have no specificity and that they can bind anywhere in the DNA. So you have this uh, double standard DNA and now you will you will have to melt this DNA to allow the primer to bind. So you will heat it uh, at boiling temperature in boiling water bath so that it will melt. And after that, you will add um, cleno fragment as an enzyme that will uh, extend the primers. You will add the random hexamers. And you will also 
uh, provide the DNTPs, but one of the DNTPs, that is the say DTTP, is radioactive. So you are taking DTTP, that is alpha 32P DTTP, because you want your DN, new DNA that will be synthesized to be radioactive, so that that can act as a probe. So now your double-stranded DNA has melted and the probes have bound at different places because they are non-specific so they will bind anywhere and your plano fragment say if it is 5 prime to 3 prime and this is 3 prime to 5 prime the probes will bind in opposite direction 5 prime to 3 prime 5 prime to 3 prime like that and they will extend this plano fragment will extend all these primers in this direction isn't it so all this dna these these small small molecules that are synthesized are radio labeled these are hot dna and they act as your probe so if you add this to to hybridize to find out it, it its counterpart its complementary dna in a, in a blotting experiment it will go and hybridize there that you can detect by autoradiography now let us talk about the second method that is nick translation nick translation is more or less similar to uh, as the okazaki fragments are made continuous uh, that is the concept so if you have this double stranded dna that is going to act as a probe so you you can make this dna radio level by nick translation first you will allow some single stranded nicks to appear in the dna for that you will treat it with endonuclease at, at a dilute concentration so that uh, the double stranded dna does not break everywhere only at some places it introduces single strand nicks like this say for example so this is the place where it is going to be becoming radioactive now you will add uh, dna polymerase 1 and you will also give the dntps like you provided earlier minus t and this t will be radioactive that is alpha 32p dttp so now your dna polymerase will come and bind here and as you know it has got 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity so it will chew up this in 5 prime to 3 prime direction and it will extend this the this this particular the upstream dna the nicked uh, 3 prime end it will extend that in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction as it has 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity also Okay, so using those two activities, it will, one by one, it will clip this DNA and it will continue to extend this upstream DNA in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And this new DNA that will be synthesized will be radioactive because it will incorporate this alpha P32 DGTP wherever there comes in adenine in the template it will incorporate uh, dttp uh, a thymine at its place so this is how uh, you can use this after heating after melting it uh, you can use this as a probe okay so now let us talk about the third method that is end leveling end level leveling uh, this is used when you have uh, an oligonucleotide in your lab that you are going to use as a, as a probe. So how do you get your oligonucleotide? Sometimes what happens, since you, uh, you have this PCR product and you must have obtained this PCR product using two primers, isn't it? So these primers will act as a, can act as a probe. They are oligonucleotides. So any of these two primers you can use, they are small. Uh, about 18 nucleotide long molecule it may be a little longer but usually it is 18 uh, nucleotide long and 
you can convert this into a probe by leveling at the 5 prime end. What you do, you need two enzymes for that. So this is your oligo. So it has got a 5 prime phosphate over here and a 3 prime hydroxyl group over here. So now what you will do, you will remove this phosphate from the 5 prime end. Okay, by treating this with sap, shrimp, alkaline, alkaline phosphatase. So this is going to remove phosphate from the 5 prime end. So now your DNA is hydroxyl group, having hydroxyl group at both the ends, 5 prime as well as a 3 prime end. So now you will treat this with yet another enzyme that is called T4PNK that is T4 polynucleotide kinase and you will provide uh, a gamma phosphate uh, through this donor element that is gamma 32P DATP. Okay. This is going to donate its gamma phosphate to this pi prime end and now it will become since this phosphate is P32 that is radioactive so your DNA becomes radioactive. This is called end leveling as you are introducing the radioactive element at the end only, at the 5 prime end only. So these are the three methods of uh, making probes. Hope you will like this uh, video lecture and if you like it press the like button, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon also so that you can get similar videos whenever I make it. Thank you very much.